Today we had the uh, privilege of meeting with Gagik Sardarian, who is the director of CART, the Center for Agro, Business and Rural Development, who is doing innovative, groundbreaking work in agricultural development and development aid in the country. We, uh, as a CART Foundation, we continue USDA Department of Agriculture, a long-lasting project in Armenia, which started back in 1992, 1993. Mm -hmm. After privatization of uh, land and agriculture, Armenian government uh, asked for uh, technical support. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, U.S. Embassy, USDA, uh, her uh, Then in 1996, there was another uh, direction of USDA project in Armenia, which uh, called uh, Marketing Assistant Project. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was involved uh, designing the strategy paper for marketing assistant project in Armenia and I was an only Armenian who was in the design team. It was a USDA, USAID joint design team in Armenia. Then I was offered to come to work for the project but the, that time I got a scholarship and I decided to quit everything in Armenia and go where? Uh, Greece, uh, oh. that was International uh, Institute, uh, mm -hmm. University. And uh, then I, I did my another master in um, after my uh, PhD and master in agriculture. I decided also to do in economics and management. I came back uh, then. Again, I was offered the job the same at, under, at, at USDA MAP. Mm -hmm. Uh, then I completed my master and I said, okay, why not? I would like to join. And you've been here ever since? Uh, since the 97, end of the 97, yeah. The first boutique winery was established in uh, 1994 in Armenia. Many people were skeptic that time when invited to the opening. It was a two-room operation, but there was a start. Young people and the families they started with the designing of new wine, new label, new approach in the winery. That winery we finished uh, something like months ago when we helped them to design a uh, some agro-tourist component. Uh, U.S. Ambassador was uh, John Heffern, uh, govern, governor of the region. That was nice to see that the winery today is producing more than uh, 150,000 bottle of wine and uh, more than half uh, uh, they ship to Russia and they, uh, every day they have a tourist uh, and so it, it was uh, from two room operation it became very successful uh, so, uh, uh, yes success but, but the more important uh, part of this success story is the spread effect okay. when people in the region they oh, uh, from small investments something could be done uh, some value added production with a local grape then uh, today we have uh, more than uh, 15 small size wineries in that valley and some of these uh, wineries today if you visit you can see this type of wineries in Napa Valley in uh, France in Italy so so can you tell us uh, what different uh, areas that CART is involved in today in uh, agricultural rural development in the country uh, so we are leading in many areas like uh, greenhouse uh, development uh, livestock especially goats and um, cows yes wine and uh, cheese production these are the main sectors we and dry fruit also dry fruit and uh, in in all sectors we bring uh, innovation new technologies because i know that you also have a farming service centers in different areas of the country that assist farmers uh, whether it's uh, in livestock or how to have a better crop in potatoes i'm assuming right uh, soon we'll open the third one in uh, June, uh, but uh, end of uh, 2014 we'll have uh, something like six, seven 
service centers. You should always talk to farmers and uh, people and see where the needs are uh, also. And not tell them what their needs are, yes. ask them what their needs I mean, that's the problem with development aid everywhere, because I think, in every sector. Because the development aid is coming like this. Uh, there's a tender. You should deliver uh, your proposal within uh, one or two months. Okay, you are not uh, so genius uh, within one or two months to know what Armenia uh, what will the need needs are. In, are in five years, you know. And de deliver detailed plan what should be done. But, but uh, US days was different, you know. They weren't like that. Uh, no, because they're not kind of a classical donor. Mm. Or, uh, they are, uh, people are coming from land grant universities. Mm -hmm. They always were involved with uh, talking to farmers in US. Mm -hmm. And they, not, they are not kind of teaching farmers, but they are working with farmers as a partner. They listen farmers and they brought the same approach to USDA map in Armenia and that was transferred to CAR and we continue the same way. That same tradition. So today uh, do you receive funding from USDA? Uh, oh yes, we still uh, receive funding from USDA but it's going... It's uh, diminishing. Diminishing because that's, that's how the card was created. USDA uh, one day they said, that, okay, we may leave the country, but we don't want to close the doors like other donors and say, okay, we did our work and we are leaving the country. We would like to help local staff to create an organization which will continue similar Which work. is the best thing because that's yes. sustainability. That's the sustainability. CART Foundation established in 2006 uh, the daughter organization, mm -hmm. CART Agro Service. CART Agro Service. It's a close uh, joint stock company right. for profit. Within the USDA period of time and card, we, we helped uh, cheese producers to create uh, more than uh, 20, 25 new cheese varieties. In Armenia, because today in Armenia, for our viewers, we have excellent um, blue cheese, what do we call it? Hollanda Gambanir that we call, and I think we also have different cheeses like Hemambeer and yes. that are being produced locally in Armenia and yes, they're really tasty well, cheeses. Well, and we have done a lot of interesting things with all of the, these cheeses you mentioned. We have kind of uh, different stories. How we started, with which partner, how it became a successful project. Uh, we have about uh, like something like 25 in new cheese variety. Even today, yeah, in our your, the, your organization yes. assisted. Yes. And you also, you didn't just assist them in, in the technology of how to make those cheeses, but also in marketing in them. Marketing, yes. And, uh, yes. Taking, being able to export them. Uh, through this project uh, initiated the first export of Armenian cheeses to Moscow, first container. Which we, year was that? Do you remember? It was uh, 2001 or 2002. Uh, mm, Basically, myself and our colleagues, uh, we just were weighing the boxes, loading. <laughs> yes, yeah, we have a pictures. <laughs> the first container, because we were wanted to be sure that everything is going correctly. Right. Uh, then the, when the first container arrived, uh, then the importer he came with a list of complaints that uh, the boxes, when we deliver to supermarket chains, there are differences in the way. In Russia, in supermarkets, they have these scales, electronic. In, in uh, Tashir region, we had this Soviet big, huge. <laughs> then, uh, I think that's so funny. Yeah. They had electronic and we had the old. You know. <laughs> so it's like started, a calculator and an abacus. <laughs> we started to come back from the market and change everything here in the production. So it was really a, a, a learning process for you yes. and your organization yes. as well. Yes, because we, we spent in Moscow several months. 
introducing Armenian uh, cheeses to the supermarket chains, uh, exhibitions, in restaurants, doing free tasting and so. But after several years, we were in Moscow in supermarket and we saw Russians, not Armenians, Russians entering the cheese uh, uh, section. section and asking, do you have a lorry cheese? Yeah. Lorry became a brand name. And this all... So you helped in the through. branding? Did you help yes. in the branding of Lori? Yes. Yeah. yes. So. You know, Gagik, I think you should be the next Minister of Agriculture, but we'll discuss that after the show. <laughs> no, because I'm just thinking, I mean, the amount of work that you're doing um, today as an organization, and I certainly don't want to get political, I'm just going to ask the question. I mean, do you work with the Ministry of Agriculture today? Yes, we are very good partners. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we work uh, in many areas that we cover and they provide support. Government started many times to do this subsidized artificial insemination program, but always uh, there was no uh, good results. Well, and we put, in, we put in the totally in private uh, base. Yeah, yeah. Farmers, they see the more efficient, I would say. Yes, farmers, they see the result. They pay for uh, good semen. Right. Veterinarians, they do in insemination, and many veterinarians earn uh, good salaries, good money uh, doing this service to well, farmers. Money doing this something like that. So it's a whole one, one, chain that's, you know, that's. And we, we train veterinarians, we bring semen from US. Uh, worldwide series company provides also technical assistance. Twice a year, they have experts coming based on our. Uh, uh, demand what we ask for. They train our vets, our farmers, and our local staff. So the chain is working. Through Card Agro Service, we link Armenian farmers and agro businesses with world best agriculture input supplies and equipment and machinery supplies. Usually we work with uh, successful companies in the world. Started from the artificial insemination or seeds for greenhouses up to John Deere tractors and combines. So in reality what you're doing today is um, you're bringing in, as you said, some of the best products in the industry that, you know, sitting in Armenia we might th think, oh, who's going to buy a John Deere tractor, right? But um, when you're assisting the farmer, when you're training the veterinarian, you're bringing in the best products, you're completing the whole agricultural chain, and you're also being self-sufficient as an organization, as a foundation, as a company. Uh, I think the work you're doing is really, really, really incredible. Um, but have you been able to be successful, for example, in the John Deere, in the, in the farming machinery side of it as well? So, it's, so you're helping bring new cheese varieties to Armenia. You're marketing them, you're exporting them, you're packaging them, you're building wine, boutique wineries and helping the wine uh, industry in Armenia. You're helping farmers create, produce better livestock because it's related by doing the artificial insemination. Yeah, it relates to income. For example, the farms the, where we successfully implement this artificial insemination program, they uh, reach the level of uh, three, four thousand liter per cow. As opposed to what? It's supposed to less than 2,000 uh, national average. The so national twice. average yes. is 2,000 liters per cow. Yes. So it's providing service, it's providing technical assistance. I mean, it's just incredible for me. This year... Okay. Also, very interesting point here. Kind of first time we are, uh, no, we are building private extension service. Transferring of knowledge, information and training goes with products. The way we approach development aid and the way we approach our vision for projects, it's not good enough to build a shiny, beautiful building and hand it over and say, here it is with all the latest technology, when you haven't transferred the knowledge. Uh, and that is the key that we keep forgetting. And this is why I think where your success has been, in terms of just the way you approach your projects, but also in the way that you're dealing with the companies that you're working with, representing their products, the best in the world, bringing their technology, experience and knowledge, and passing it on to our farmers, keeping them on the land, 
so that you know we're, we are not depopulating our country I think is a phenomenal uh, approach and something that other organizations should take away from I mean should learn from you when, in that sense yesterday uh, we were in the Duster Milan uh, dairy cheese produ producing company in Tashi mm -hmm. with US ambassador John Heffer again when first we visited this company there was a just one room 500 liter of milk and three people working two brothers and wife of one of the today is a, one of the biggest and best cheese producer in Caucasus in the Caucasus, in the Caucasus. I'm not talking about Armenia if you go you that cheese plant you may think of oh, some oligarch came here really? and, yes, but it was just a small family thing it, was a, it is a family business they grow up from one room operation 500 liter of milk process and today how many liters of milk in the season it's uh, more than 20,000 liter and in that time uh, I, I took the interesting picture yesterday because I saw the women coming with a 10 liter of milk that from near buckets but they got also big tanks are coming from villages and this company through uh, USD and CART support they uh, got uh, access to Moscow market they ship their product to California California yes for me the biggest story or the biggest lesson for, to take away from all of this and always is that if you start something you believe in with three people two brothers and a wife with 50 <laughs> liters of milk and 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 it is possible to be successful in Armenia it is possible to be successful as a farmer in Armenia but there's a lot of room for improvement I'm sure yes. and you're filling that your organization is filling that void I think that exists today it is all about people yes it's not that project did everything no they 95% of the success it's people yeah. And finding the right they, people, yeah, the right, right partners. Right. We were lucky to have uh, very good partners, but uh, uh, unfortunately, maybe we couldn't cover all the needs in agriculture in Armenia. We have limited budget, limited resources, but with these examples, with wine, cheese, uh, greenhouse, uh, which we can find in, in, in this yes, yes. magazine, Many for example, the biggest obstacle for us it's when we go to the villages and we see the doors are closed there's nobody left the uh, people left the village or country uh, then we see that there are no potential to, to grow and how you can be successful if you, around the you need people you need people if we take let's say only equipment sec sector or greenhouse or uh, milking machines or some then we see that similar direction in Kazakhstan in Ukraine in Russia have bigger offices than our mm -hmm. offices because it's market you know it's people right. they, so we need people we need people so they can pay for our services and produce enough food not only for local market but to export to Russia to different countries that's that's our, our dream. That we I think it's a dream that we all uh, should share and 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 uh, expand upon. I really want to thank you for taking the time uh, to meet with us. Uh, I'm sure that our viewers are going to be uh, very impressed and very thrilled to know that there are there is an organization like this, and you know this is a call to action. We need people. We need new values. We need new technology, new knowledge, and that's something that you have started and will be the building block, I hope, to uh, future success of our country too. Thank you. Thank you.